Hello friends, I'm Professor John Gallagher and welcome to CircuitPython School, an introduction to maker-style electronics programming for the absolute beginner. I'm a university professor and I've taught technical topics to thousands of students in person and thousands more online, and in an effort to reach more people and to have a greater impact, I'm offering my course materials online to independent learners and for use by other educators. Yes, teachers, it's okay for you to use my lessons in your classes, I want you to do that. Save yourself some prep time, you deserve it. People seem to like my courses, and I hope you do too. After many iterations of the course, I've chosen to focus on open source CircuitPython. It runs on a ton of hardware, supports a lot of peripherals, and has fabulous online support for me and my students. I also only use microcontrollers. They're less complicated, but they allow for advanced projects like Internet of Things and robotics. Some of my favorite boards are the Raspberry Pi Pico W series. They're cheap, they have Wi-Fi, and they don't have an operating system on them. I no longer use the single board Raspberry Pi computers with the operating systems. Students found them complicated and took too long to set up and maintain and this slowed down learning and created a lot of student frustration. Now these are my choices based on my teaching environment and my experience. Your mileage may vary. If you feel religiously different, please don't flame me. My students and I think this has worked out great. Now this is the same playlist that I used to introduce CircuitPython when teaching my own undergraduate physical computing course. That class is called Physical Computing, Art, Robotics, and Tech for Good, and it assumes no prior programming or electronics experience. But by the end of this course, students use their newfound superpowers to create their own original projects that you can find on Instructables, including assistive technology projects for young people with physical challenges. I'm really proud of their work and the course that we've created together, and I share this content online for free in hopes that it helps others. Be sure to let me know if you find it useful. Now I use two boards in this course. We start out with a $25 Circuit Playground Blue Fruit by Adafruit, sometimes referred to as the CPB. It's about the size of a Ritz cracker, and it's a great first board because it's packed with features, including 10 individually controllable multicolored LED lights, a motion sensor, a light sensor, a temperature sensor, a speaker, two buttons, a slide switch, 14 connection pads so you can expand the board with add-ons by using simple alligator clips and avoid soldering or breaking out the breadboard, and seven of these pads support capacitive touch, meaning you can write code to React when you've touched them. Even cooler, the board supports Bluetooth, so you can use Adafruit's free Bluefruit Connect app on Android, iOS, or the Mac to remotely control your projects. Later in this course, we move to the $7 Raspberry Pi Pico W, and as newer versions of this board become available, like the Pico 2W, you'll see some of the videos featuring newer boards, but the code and tutorials should be the same. Pico boards allow us to learn about wiring using a breadboard, and the W board support Wi-Fi, allowing us to build networked and Internet of Things projects. The Pico tutorials are further down in this playlist, bit.ly slash circuitpython school, or you can access just the Pico lessons directly from this URL, bit.ly slash pico dash school. And if you're interested in a list of all the hardware that I use in my course, you can find that in a Google Sheet linked in this video's description. Now, although the first portion of this course uses the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, or CPB, most of the lessons in this series work on the Circuit Playground Express, or CPX. The Circuit Playground Express can't do Bluetooth, but it can do just about everything else. Now these videos won't work with a Circuit Playground Classic because that board doesn't run CircuitPython. Now while we'll learn CircuitPython by using features in the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, the concepts we'll learn will translate to any of the hundreds of other boards that also run CircuitPython. In fact, if you follow along with the full course, you'll see that even though we start with the CPB, we're able to take much of the code that we've written for that board and run it directly on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So CircuitPython runs on hundreds of boards. It's one of the easiest and most powerful ways you can program a microcontroller so you're in the right place. Now, if you're going through this course, I know you want to write code that makes electronics do cool stuff. And I'm sorry that we have to delay things, but we do need to set some things up before we can start. First, we need to set up a board by installing CircuitPython. We'll do that in the next lesson, and you'll want to pay attention to these steps because they're the same steps you'll repeat to upgrade a board when a new version of CircuitPython comes out. In the lesson after that, we'll learn about libraries, example programs, and we'll use a tool called CircUp. CircUp makes it easier and less error prone to add the files that CircuitPython needs to work with new hardware. Now trust me on this, I didn't use CircUp in earlier classes and students often made preventable mistakes. It was very frustrating for them, so using the CircUp tool is definitely the way to go. Now part of this lesson will involve getting a sample program to work, so we will see some CircuitPython action. But to get coding, we're going to need a program for writing Python code. 
That's our third lesson. We're going to install and configure the free PyCharm software. It's a professional product, and while it takes a while to set up, it will prevent a lot of the frustrating errors that new students often make when using a more limited program. Trust me on this. I've taught this course for years, and in previous classes, we used a free tool called Moo that's very popular. My students found Moo to be really limited, and in fact, it's being discontinued anyway. But I hope you stick with me, because if you get through this course, you will be rewarded with mad skills to build projects that are both ruthlessly awesome and and awesomely ruthless. So I hope you enjoy these lessons. Feel free to share with educator friends and others who want to learn electronics making. Be sure to like and subscribe because there's lots more to come. And if you like what you see, please let me know. Ready to get started? We'll queue up the playlist and let's make something awesome.